नमस्कार कैन यू ऑल सी माय स्क्रीन द प्रेजेंटेशन आर यू एबल टू सी द प्रेजेंटेशन ओके Uh, I'm ready, sir. You can uh, let me know whenever I can start. I'll start. Okay, we can start with uh, introduction. Neelam, we can start. Yes. Roshni, over to you, dear. Hi, and good morning, everyone. I'm affluent to tell you that we have stepped in the second webinar of day two successfully. the session before this the session on law the webinar on law has got 400 plus uh, registrations and the participants were 250 plus now i'm sure you all must be familiar that our career guidance and students placement cell has conferring the career fair for three consecutive dates 18th 19th and 20th of march that is yesterday today and tomorrow sequentially through a chain of webinars then followed by a workshop at the end of the year they have been and will be for sure full of and full of informative and affirmative vibes which will help you in chasing the pathways leading to sweet and sweat success achieving the success in any way is always considered an art an art which help you reach to your desired goals art can be synchronized with a strong reflection of emotions and this now just reminded me of our current webinar theme which is singing again it is a pure form of art singing is one of the other criteria which has helped our nation gain the importance across the globe starting from the start like from the ancient times we have attained the milestones and on set the landmarks the singers from that time that is the indian classical singers who showered us and entire humanity with the end number of songs not only entertained entertained us but also showed the authenticity and truthfulness of the singing which included ragas ghazal and bhajans too do you know in that time the musical schools were termed as gharanas might the folk generation be like what is classical now talk something about western music well no offense but once in a lifetime all of you might have heard some songs from our old and gold era well that era that gold era was not only limited for our elder generations but also to interest in the young generations like x and z too as indian classical dance and singing has always been evergreen instant in fact the men used to do, used to take the training in classical dance while the women too been a significant part of classical singing whether it was difficult to learn it was done with sacred soul until it was done with the sacred soul and that's why depicted always in the front of gods and goddesses without making this webinar dull within a blink of an eye let us head towards our today's webinar this current webinar on on career in vocal music and production i know this tried to chanting as a new but now it is a time to have a view point of someone who is pro in the classical singing industry and for that we have a visitant mrs brinda manikavasakar who is carnatic vocalist that is karnataka sangeetam artist in a very less time she has seized an enormous amount of success with her magical art ma'am is also performing vocalist and a research scholar in indian classical carnatic music Ma'am has been performing as a child artist from the age of 10 years and she carries the experience of performing from past 20 years like that's so amazing Ma'am is also a an A grade artist for All India Radio which is situated in Chennai and if you think that she only has acknowledgement in music then let me tell you it's not because ma'am possesses a graduate degree of BTech in information technology from anna university of chennai as well which she completed back in 2011 also she has a masters degree from abroad from the georgetown university of washington dc usa in the field of msc with biostatistics which was accessed in the year 2013 right a year after that in 
she graded the degree of MA from the University of Madras. And in the same year, she finished with a certified course called Fundamentals of Western Music Theory with the University of Edinburgh. Currently, ma'am is pursuing her PhD in music from the, in, from the University of Madras again. Ma'am has an abundance of achievements, starting from the release of her albums, been a participant in the concerts, received a ton of rewards and recognition from the society, and also received the various prestigious awards. I will name out a few as the Papasam, Papanasam Sivan Award from Narada Gana Sabha from about two years ago in the year 2019. Then V Subramaniam Young Talents Award from Sri Semangudi Srinivasa a year Golden Jubilee Foundation recently in the last year 2020. Supplementary, Ma'am has also been a runner-up as she was amid one of the finalists in Narbeth at All India level competition in the, back, in the year back in 2014. And many more such diamonds she is crowned, she is crowned with. At present, before urging to Ma'am to start with the webinar, a sincere appeal to all the present participants to please find the feedback links at the end of the webinar, which will be displayed in the comment section and load it with your required details to employ the e-certificate for participation on your mail ID. Please, ma'am, take the in charge of this webinar. Uh, thank you so much for introducing me <clears throat> and having me be a part of this, uh, this session. Uh, I'm really happy that you're also uh, discussing the arts also as a part of the uh, career counseling uh, program. Um, I will quickly jump into uh, the content. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, briefly about the careers in uh, music, specifically uh, vocal music. Uh, and uh, I, I'm presently doing my uh, PhD in uh, Madras University in music, and I'm also a performing artist. So we have three main parts, uh, which we're all familiar with. One is performance, uh, the, the onstage performance, and uh, the other is the academic pursuit, which uh, may be teaching or uh, research. So uh, we are going to look at the requirements and, and what the job prospects are like for uh, these three parts. So performance is, is a whole different ball game. It's a very different uh, uh, pursuit in comparison with uh, teaching and research in the sense that uh, it requires a certain amount of um, uh, dealing with uncertainties every day. Uh, so each performance demands a certain level of patience, uh, a certain level of uh, expecting and being being able to handle the unknown. And uh, that comes with a lot of with a lot of uh, hard work, passion and uh, practice and that dedication. So these are not just words that I'm, I'm throwing out there or over here on my uh, the PPT, but these are like absolutely imperative if you want to uh, take up the uh, performing space when it comes to your art form. Whether it is music or dance or anything, you, you have to absolutely uh, uh, be, uh, be uh, you, you need to absolutely have that tenacity to be able to deal with uh, so much more that happens uh, without beyond our control and the, the unknowns. So the performance sphere uh, has its uh, dimensions like that. Uh, so while we talk about the performance, of course, uh, we learn from our gurus. Uh, we learn uh, for several years. We keep learning. The learning doesn't stop. We are constantly learning, like just like uh, how uh, speaker before me spoke about how they need to keep updating Brenda about the Brenda, laws. Brenda, madam, just a yes. minute. Yeah. Please put in, uh, put in the sh uh, slide show. Mm -hmm. The slideshow in your uh, this thing PPT. Yeah, I you I can't am. see my slideshow. No, I we can see your slide, but it is at home, not slideshow. The letters oh, are oh, slide oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah, you. No sorry for interrupting. No, no, no problem. Where is that? Uh, that up. Up, up. Slideshow. Home. I think my this thing is covering it. Yeah, yeah. One second. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
एफ सी बटन एफ सी बटन या 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 आई गोट इट आई गोट इट या इस इट बेटर ना यस या ओके या इन सेव थिंग ओके मोस्ट ऑफ़ ऑल्स आर ऑन मोबाइल नो सो ओके ओके या या सॉरी या ओके सो as i said so yeah uh while we talking about the performance sphere uh it comes with its own uh you know challenges uh so we learn from a, a guru for several years there's a lot of uh, practice also that happens uh each uh, there is there are different techniques of practice and all that i'm not getting into that but after certain years of practice and you know starting uh, to get uh, stage experience uh there are also other things that uh, can come into place such as uh, getting a, a grade from all on all their radio uh so you apply for uh, gradation at all their radio and th then there are uh, they call you for auditions and then they judge you to uh, they 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 call you a certain grade after, based on your performance so that is one thing that could be done uh and another thing is uh, being empaneled as an iccr uh, artist um iccr is uh, the indian council for uh, cultural uh, relations and uh, here uh, being empaneled as an artist of uh, iccr is is a process today thankfully with the power of uh, uh, the internet and and the technology that we have available to us at our hands we are able to um, look up online google all these things and be able to fill up forms online submit them online so there are uh, several things that we can uh, do at the click of our hands so uh, iccr empanelment is uh, about being a uh, part of a very prestigious uh, uh, panel of artists and uh, by being a uh, part of iccr we one gets up opportunities to uh, to travel to different places within india outside india for different cultural events uh, through the government of india so this is uh, a recognized uh, this thing of the government of india uh, ccrt is uh, uh, the center for cultural resources and training they also offer uh, uh, a scholarship a funding for uh, those who are learning music so there is a certain age group and all that that we have to look into and uh, if within that age group you can apply for ccrt and get uh, uh, a scholarship for the period of learning a certain period so there are several uh, 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 what do you say scholarships and funding opportunities that are available out there like i said we can uh, we can keep updating ourselves by looking up online there are also some scholarships provided by the ministry of culture uh, government of india so uh, those also can be looked into so this is uh, regarding the performance uh, sphere so moving on to uh, teaching or research uh, again teaching uh, is all uh, we all already know that it's very popular on uh, media like uh, 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 skype or uh, you know whatsapp uh, video calls or phone calls something there are informal classes that are taking place that is one thing uh, and uh, what is the the academic what is the other other uh, what are the other ways in which the teaching can go about uh, we can there are courses in colleges for uh, music training uh, diploma in music tra uh, teaching uh, and this uh, this this definitely will count to uh, Uh, being able to uh, when you apply for jobs to teach music in other places uh, but again like i said diploma in music teaching will involve uh, not just doing the diploma but also uh, knowledge of music so that knowledge of music is also important and uh, when we move on to uh, the formal this thing uh, the formal uh, uh, the formal front uh we can do ba uh, and bachelors and masters uh in music and there are definitely certificate courses there are so many mo uh, more uh, available today than uh, before like there is voice culture there is uh, uh different uh, different small courses uh, for different uh, tributaries under music itself and uh, there is mphil and phd and postdoc just as in any other subject for music also and uh, mind you this also applies to not this, this is not just for carnatic music this is also for hindustan music western music uh, ethnomusicology whatever it is that you uh, propose to study 
and uh, this also just like in the practical uh, music is left that's the performing arts sphere here also we need to constantly be updating ourselves with what is happening so there are journals there are places where we uh, write articles and post our articles there are uh, other uh, there are webinars there are workshops there are sev several things that are happening that we have to uh, as much as possible be updated with because the things are changing things are uh, new things are being researched there are new findings that are uh, coming out every day uh, and so it is important to be updated uh, especially if we take the uh, academic part because uh, it like i said it there's nothing that's constant it, it, the uh, interpretations are moving on and uh, we need to keep up uh, while it comes to uh, uh, music research there is also the UGC JRF uh, exam, the net exam uh, that we are uh, uh, that we may write, which uh, by virtue of uh, writing and clearing the exam, we will be uh, uh, we can get a scholarship, a certain amount of funding for our research uh, uh, period. So this is a great opportunity for anyone who would like to do uh, research in the music field, uh, this exam and uh, there are uh, we can if if once uh, you've written it and you've not cleared it you can always uh, come back and write it again also so uh, again the the portions the syllabus uh, tends to change once in a while so we have to keep updated our, ourselves uh, about what the syllabus was um, wh wh when i wrote the exam it is very different from how it is right now so we need to keep updating ourselves and uh, so what uh, what what are the job prospects uh, very much, uh, of course, teaching at uh, institutes or colleges or universities, and um, uh, are based on our qual qualifications and uh, based on whether we've you know written uh, a net exam, for example, and we are, you know if we are uh, applying to a government university, then there are uh, pay gradations and all that uh, come into place uh, by virtue of these uh, exams and whatever you've qualified. There are other scholarships. Uh, and fellowships that uh, that help uh, musicians travel abroad uh, for their research uh, and uh, for performances, uh, such as uh, the Ful Fulbright Fellowship. Uh, there are many others also. Like I said, there is there is so much out there that we can explore. Uh, the Fulbright Fellowship uh, it allows for us to uh, do a certain amount of research in another college, continue our research basically from from here from in India to uh, another college in uh, the US or yeah. So this uh, through the scholarship we can expand our our the learning sphere is expanded and uh, we gain a lot of uh, experience uh, moving to another place and learning certain aspects that we want to uh, learn from over there uh, and specifically move on over there. So um, while we also talk about, uh, just a second. yeah, these are uh, prospectors. So where are these places that I'm talking about? These are just a list of some of the colleges um, uh, that offer a very good uh, music uh, courses. Uh, there's uh, masters and uh, uh, PhD and uh, postdoctoral courses that are available in uh, many of these uh, colleges that I've mentioned. There are also the diploma and uh, teaching uh, courses that are uh, available over here. Uh, there are many more that I've not put over here. For example, the Music Academy, uh, they have a course, uh, music uh, course. They used to have a teacher training course also before, but I think it's not available now. Uh, so uh, a music course. And so these are these are the courses that we uh, equip ourselves with and we decide where, where it is that we want to go, whether it is the research, uh, uh, musicology, that side, or whether it is... Uh, uh, the performance side or whether it is the teaching line these courses equip us according to uh, what decisions we make and uh, this university the wesleyan university that i've put over here yeah uh, this university has a very nice uh, ethnomusicology department so uh, there are there is a lot of uh, uh, within the music, there is a lot of uh, uh, narrower paths that we can, you know, narrow down on and uh, focus for our uh, research purposes, for uh, studying purposes. So uh, this is uh, briefly what I wanted to talk about when it uh, comes to uh, music and its uh, career. Uh, vocal music, like I said, uh, it's a whole world out there when it comes to Carnatic or Hindustani or whatever it's devotional music. There is there is a lot of content that is yet to be discovered and studied. So the the scope for research is ample. 
and uh, the scope of course we always need uh, good teachers and of course uh, the performance fair is also uh, looking looking to have many more uh, artists uh, as they as days pass by so uh, the key to uh, anything like uh, i heard in the previous lecture is really that passion and that that hard work and uh, with with the passion and the hard work we we comes more and more clarity and i'm sure that will uh, direct us in uh, direct us towards our dreams uh, coming true so uh, if there are any questions uh, i i'd be ready to take them up thank you very much it was very precise thank you to the point so anyone all the participant please raise your hand if you have any question we can take two three questions nisha pratap sivani pradeep sivani okay ma'am i have a question that what would you recommend for students to go for informal or formal uh, education if they want to go in the music industry as a vocalist okay i think someone else is not muted but i think i've understood your question you mean to ask whether i would suggest uh, someone to go to a formal institution or informally learn from uh, someone right is that your yes. question yeah okay so um, i think there are some wonderful institutions out there uh, formal institutions also it's it's really finally uh, based on a lot of other things also like your convenience uh, how how i don't know location distance all that also comes in, comes into play uh, i uh, there are uh, inst institutions come with uh, certain things like uh, uh the the class setting would be different from uh, uh maybe how it is in an informal setting there are changes like that there are other factors also that come into play i, I wouldn't uh, choose a particular one i have also uh, learnt in, in institution when i started learning music and then i later later shifted on to this thing because of uh, time clashes for example so there are certain things that you have to play by when you uh, join an institution uh, that may be a little more flexible when you uh, join uh, an informal like uh, go in person to a teacher and Done. so otherwise i think if the if the teaching uh, the the person who is teaching the guru uh, is it's it's all in their hands so good uh, if if it's a it's a great guru then whether it's an institution or whether it's at an informal space it's going to be great anywhere it is so uh, it depends on all these factors also i wouldn't choose uh, one over the other per se it's it's not an easy uh, choice to just uh, come arrive at you know immediately it depends on the place and lot of other things also but ultimately it's about you and your guru and uh, the exchange of knowledge between you two so uh if it's a group setting and you feel like there are too many people and it's not working out for you there's so many other things come into play right so uh, it's ultimately about whether you're able to learn and uh, you're, you're able to uh, pick up everything that's been taught to you in class okay next one gorov relwani you can ask beta ha huh. hello huh. hello ma'am yes good morning good morning uh ma'am uh, can you talk in hindi yes i can understand hindi but uh, okay, my okay, okay, yeah no problem yeah ma'am kaise na ki maine 7th 8th mein sikha tha classical mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, but uske pehle uh, matlab bina kisi sikhe main gaata tha bachpan se hi aur uh, khud ki compositions khud ki lyrics uh, wo ek bachpan se meri matlab carry on hai abhi tak mm बट कहीं ना कहीं मतलब जैसे अलंकार से रागस मैंने सीखे थे स्कूल टाइम में तो वो थोड़ा मैं थोड़ा थोड़ा डेली आज भी प्रैक्टिस करते आता हूँ मैं कभी कभी मतलब जब भी होता है प्रॉपर लेकिन बेसिक मेरा प्रैक्टिस डेली चालू रहता है साह का सी शाह पे साह का रियाज मेरा चालू रहता है और थोड़े अलंकार में करता हूँ बट मतलब कैसा ना बेस वॉइस जो जैसे हैवीनेस होती है ना वॉइस में वो बहुत ज्यादा है और अभी तक मतलब मेरी वॉइस जो है रॉ साउंड करती है पूरी एक रॉ पूरी जो होती है ना रफ वॉइस तो वो ही थोड़ा टेक्निकल है मेरा क्वेश्चन तो मुझे इसके रिगार्डिंग थोड़ा जानना है कि मैं रफ नेस कैसे निकाल सकता हूँ अपने वॉइस से पूरी uh okay uh, i okay i understood your question but can i please answer in uh, english because i'm sure yeah, i will yeah, be able to yeah, articulate yeah, yeah. no as well in hindi um uh, this okay so are you uh, as of now are you still going to class are you still learning right now no 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 
uh, ah, not for so learn yeah, yeah. Have, okay yeah. but you're you're singing by yourself at home or you're not self uh, by self from ah. uh, childhood okay so you're not going to a guru as of now right no not now okay so i think that it's very important that you uh, go to a guru because these are uh, nuances uh, that a guru will uh, point out especially if you go continuously to uh, continuously a period after the voice breaks and then you have to uh, uh, you know yes. the vo- voice settles down especially that crucial period a guru's guidance is uh, very very important uh so you know uh, i am not able to tell you exactly what you have to do because each person's voice is different so i i won't be able to tell you like this is exactly what you have to do to you know uh, get get your voice out of uh, that that rough uh, you know this thing that you're saying it, it has but uh, i can definitely refer you to some uh, you know voice uh, 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 p- people who are proficient and who have studied yeah. the voice uh, properly so uh, i can maybe send pass on someone's contact a couple of people's okay, contact to you yes, who can help you guide with uh, this voice uh, issue okay okay, okay yeah okay. i definitely will okay. do that what's your name again gaurav rilwani gaurav rilwani okay all right okay. i'll i can i can pass on that to you sure okay ma'am please thank you yeah yeah because often it's just uh, the- a technique that uh, that you have to master it may be a wrong yeah. practice method it can be anything yes, yes, so you need that I'm guidance i'm doing basic only Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it could be a wrong practice technique. You may be not knowing what is. You are doing something to yourself, but you're not. You may not be knowing what exactly is going wrong. So for that, the guidance is needed. I will definitely pass on someone, uh, yes, a couple please. of uh, specialists. Uh, you know, people who have who are specialists in this field. I can pass on their contact. Okay. Beta, you okay. can yeah. contact me. I will. Um, yes, ma'am. Take, yes, ma'am. Take information from a madam. Okay, ma'am. Nisha, uh, good morning, Brinda, last ma'am. Last question. Yeah, good morning. Uh, yeah. Neelam, ma'am, can I ask a question? Yes, yes, yes. go on. Or a student yes. is there? Uh, okay. Uh, good morning, Brinda, ma'am. Uh, Professor yeah. Veronica here. Yes. Uh, ma'am, I have been learning Bharat Natyam and Kathak since my childhood. Uh, I have learned something about Mela Karta Raga, and uh, I have heard that it is being splitted into two parts. but uh, i don't know exactly what it is uh, so can you explain me ma'am you mean to say suddha madhyama and prati madhyama raga is that what you're talking about oh, yeah something like that I, ha- yeah. i don't have proper information about that uh, okay but Now, if you does mela karta in are you talking form. about okay there are several mela uh, yeah. schemes mela karta schemes okay. if you're talking yeah, about the it is divided into two groups uh, according to me so uh yeah again ma'am is this the are you talking about the 72 mela karta uh-huh. scheme right 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 okay so uh the 72 mela karta scheme has uh of course 72 ragams and mm-hmm. all this each of the 72 ragas has a different uh combination of swaras or notes okay so they are divided into 36 and 36 based on yeah. uh, the shuddha madhyama and prati madhyama that is the sarigama pada nisa the ma uh-huh. is of two varieties which is one is shuddha madhyama and the other is prati madhyama so the first 36 ragas all have shuddha madhyama the next set of 36 ragas have prati madhyama okay ma 2 ma 1 and ma 2 in other words okay sari ga ma padani sa sari da pa ma gari sa ma that's ma 1 shuddha madhyama hmm. sari ga ma padani sa sari da pa ma gari sa ma that's ma to ma ma you see the difference hmm. yeah yeah so yeah so the f- first one is shuddha madhyam ma hmm. and prati madhyam is ma so that is uh, the second set of the 36 ragas have that so kalyani mech kalyani uh, yamuna uh, you you would have heard yaman kalyani all that, yeah. that yeah, those yeah, are all from that. from that side and from this side it's uh, you know uh, shankara varanam for example like you like your bilawal thought you know sari ga ma pada ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga that is the first uh, set of. and these 36 ragas are then divided uh, again again amongst themselves into six chakras so each chakra has a different combination of ri and ga and all that so that's a that's a whole okay. topic by itself yeah. okay yeah yeah i understood ma'am thank yeah. you so much thank yeah, you so no much problem. yeah no problem Okay, uh, uh, ma'am, may I ask you another question? Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Okay, ma'am, my question is that I sing devotional folk songs uh, since okay. my childhood. Okay. However, uh, if I want to take music as a profession, 
so how financially sound uh, should be uh, you know to start with how much amount do we need to invest in and second thing uh, this is something which i have adapted from the surroundings i have not learned from anyone although mm. i would like to so how to pick it up as a career how do we get uh, the uh, basic career into music uh, especially into vocalism rather than uh, you know rather than instrumentalism uh so what did you say you you're singing folk music is it yes yes ma'am i sing folk okay uh, are the there other music. okay uh, your uh, which particular kind of folk music you are talking about is uh, i am not aware but have you heard other uh, artists who are singing this uh, this kind of music that you are talking about this folk music and uh, i don't know yes. what exact yeah uh, actually if i name a few so nanaela yeah. abida parveen these okay. are some of the musicians who i have right. picked up this information from okay 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 so uh, i would suggest that uh, while you you may sing out of your own interest and your own talent it is also important to get guide guidance from a from a guru uh, because that, that's a whole different experience this is your own journey that is that has to be there yes of course even when you're learning from a guru there is a journey uh, within yourself that's happening but uh, learning from a guru uh, that that guidance is kind of uh, very important especially uh, to th- there are so many things that we may not come across when we are doing this alone so a, a guru guides you through those important points and uh, so f- first thing is that and uh, i to be honest i i i don't know if i can say that so and so amount of investment is what is needed i i don't know Because if i can say that i uh, sort of remember a few uh. of my friends and uh. Uh, you know a few of my friends who were actually interested in music so they had an yearly investment of bare minimum of 6 lakhs so is that a is that such a great amount which we need to invest to acquire knowledge of music Well, no, I don't. Okay, uh, to my knowledge, no. I don't think you need to invest that much to uh, learn music. The learning process is not. Uh, uh, I I don't think so. Uh, at least I I'm not aware of that. But you're again. You're talking about folk music. Is this what they said for folk music? No, ma'am. I mean uh. for uh, basic diploma in uh, learning music. No, I don't think so. For these courses, no. These courses are not that. Uh, uh, that I mean, they're not that. uh that i don't think you need to spend that much for these courses uh in fact all these courses i mean my friends have done many of these courses that i discussed today diploma in music training or uh voice culture training or uh ma ba in music all these courses don't cost uh that much the amount that you're talking about so i think you need to maybe look at uh, other universities uh have you uh, have you uh, expanded your search to like maybe all over uh, india or, uh, or you know uh, other universities also uh ma'am actually in mumbai we generally have uh, only two to three options so okay. i have tried with all the three options out of okay. which two options were very very costly and one option was uh, wherein we require voice culture training done So okay only then they would give us the admission now because my voice culture training was not done i could not go for that option as well. okay 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 yeah maybe then you can go ahead with that and also look like outside of uh, mumbai for you know uh, other colleges other there are, there are several uh, universities uh, prestigious universities that you know offer these courses uh, uh, at a, a very uh, not not a very you know costly rate so i i think you should explore uh, that also okay and doing and the voice uh, culture course is also a good good thing i mean it's a, it's a good knowledge to have yeah yeah go on yeah sorry ma'am i uh, interrupted yeah. you no, no. Uh, actually yeah, the other thing is how to take it up as a career because if we registered ourselves as an artist also it might take us a long term to get the contracts yeah that's a, this is a this is not a very easy question because um the journey is really different for, for, from person to person there are uh, it's it's that's why i said in the i, I think it's, it's it was in one of the earlier slides that i shared that it really needs if you want to get into this i really don't think getting into it with the idea that you know i need to earn so much will work in my opinion i don't think that will work it needs a certain amount of uh, patience and you know what not so it takes sometimes it takes a longer time sometimes it takes shorter than we thought it would so you really it's not really very predictable you know the performance scene 
so we never know what would suddenly work out we never know what you know uh, there are so many unknowns that you have to deal with uh, from one per- one performances i don't know the the mic system to how your voice is that day so many unknowns are there right so yes, it yeah so it's a lot of unknowns that you're dealing with so i would i would say that you know uh, to not enter the performing sphere with the idea that okay i'm going to enter and i'm going to start earning no that, that doesn't really no, actually work. ma'am yeah. uh, basically we have always heard that uh, you know the people who uh, turn up for singing in the reality hmm. shows only they ah. get a contract so is it something right, right. which is really followed in the music industry that the people who will come up and uh, sing in the reality shows only will get up the contracts or otherwise also people get it otherwise also people get it but yes you see that media is a very powerful tool right uh, you get uh, once someone is like exposed through a a, a, a talent show or a show or show like that their their name kind of reaches uh, i mean the, the the kind of popularity that a music show brings is it's very different from how i maybe someone would come up you know singing concerts from place to place right so there is a certain difference like that so well we we've, we've got to we've got to handle everything uh, that also uh, we've got to handle an artist who has not yet seen uh, uh, a music uh, you know talent show on on a powerful or a you know big media channel so ev- everyone is a part of this fear but like like you said it's not only for those who are seen uh, on tv channels it's also for many of those who are striving and putting all their hard work off off these off of these uh, tv channels also so we've got to believe that you know uh, it will all pay off that's that's i i think that's very important like, so putting uh, in that nisha beta you take contact ரோஷ்னி Yes ma'am. Thanks a bunch ma'am for taking out the time from your busy schedule for sharing with us your findings and opinions inspiring and encouraging us with your presence and for giving an excellent coverage of the topic. Thanks a lot ma'am for joining in. I'm glad I could be a part of this actually uh, and and thank you for having uh, music and the performing arts also represented as a part of the the career sessions. Okay ma'am. So yeah. here is not the end of the uh, of the webinar. It was just the phase 1. We have reached in the second half of the session. Allow me to continue with her theme. Music too is considered a form of art. In fact, you might agree that singing and music both can be coined as one with one as one without other is incomplete. we have to agree that music has always been a prominent part of a life for every mood or occasion we have music to express any scenario or emotion without words like love enmity shyness or rain etc we have the hand of music i'm sure all must have heard and that's not it you can convert into a song with just you can convert a dialogue into a song with just music I list out a few from the latest trends such as you all must have heard rasode mein kaun tha main itni sundar hu main kya karu aur ye hum hai ye hamara webinar hai aur yeh excellence gain ho raha hai and so on like singing we have a musician inside us too i tell you how just go back into the incidents where you hold the pencil pen book or any possible object near you and start banging it on the desk during the school time or on the dinner table spoon and plate used to be your instruments these were some of the funny examples but there is a one serious example too like humming the different sounds now which turned up for beatboxing the role of the musician is not only restricted for producing the music with some instruments it is equally hard working as the music of any song should mix up perfectly with the words it should maintain the intensity of a particular emotion even just the music itself going on in the background it must have the relevance to the friend situation 
there used to be constant flow of the music in any song and that's not it fitting the region and the audience too is the major role of musician while choosing any sound a lot of word of amateur now permit me to present to you all an executive musician amongst us a renowned renowned resource person mr kunal dole who has adapted a certificate course which is for music production from psm the true school of music and in the music production only he attained the degree of diploma from bimm that stands out as british and irish modern music located in london so holds an additional certificate of course in sound music engineering too from tsm as well i'm astonished and meek enough to outline some of his some of his abilities as bosom of the process of recording sound microphone placements mixing audio for music along with some consciousness of poly as sfx and adr besides sir has a grip over music for games and associate of fm od studio together with midi transformation techniques now before handling the stage over to sir a genuine and a modest rule for all the prized participants to stay keep in touch till the termination of this webinar in order to acquire the e certificate for participation on your mail addresses now i may request sir to please start with the webinar thank you so much sir hi thanks for having me i'm kunal don't call me sir because i'm sure everyone here is more accomplished than me um yeah a little introduction about myself um i'm a sound engineer and a producer and also a session musician um i was i was invited and i would like to thank dr menin the principal of arkitel reja college uh, mrs kapoor the vice principal of arkitel reja college and i would also like to thank the management the staff and the students for inviting me today um i was listening to the previous two panelists and uh, it, honestly more than their craft they were talking about how to handle your life once you've had a career and i think that's very important um but anyway uh, let me just talk about production for a bit because uh, it's a very misunderstood concept not a lot of people are aware of what that means now the word producer has evolved over time you know in the past 70 or 80 years it has come to mean different things in the beginning it just meant uh, the person who would own the studio or who would fund the project and that would be the producer who later became the executive producer that's the term for it and then in the 60s we have the beatles and we have a new role with the producer where he's more of an artist manager and yes some say in the creative process you know and then as the 70s and the 80s rolled by the producers became more and more involved with the uh, with the actual production per se of the of the track and the music and they they had more say in it and uh, and as the 90s and the 2000s went by um because of advancements in technology uh the jobs which were typically being done by a uh, by say five or six people like uh, you know uh, things pertaining to sound or bit of mixing a bit of arrangement you know that all started to be done by the producer so today a producer is someone who creates music in the simplest of terms in the most uh, basic form you know like a person who kick starts an idea or a person who takes an idea from someone and interprets that idea and puts it out in the form of a song you know that's what a what a producer is today and a producer will work with a variety of people to get the job done um now there are various things which a person can do in the music industry apart from uh, being a vocalist or an instrumentalist you know and that's maybe uh, someone can be a recording engineer you know the person who controls the the console and they control all all the equipment which which is there in the studio or they can be a mix engineer where they control the aspects of the sound like uh, you know various frequencies you know for balance of the frequencies or balance of volumes 
uh, that's what a mix engineer does. Or there will be a mastering engineer who will make sure that what a mix engineer does is uh, is presentable. You know, he will put it in a format for for everything. Like Netflix has a different format, YouTube has a different format, uh, Apple Music has uh, has a different format, Spotify has a different format. So a mastering engineer will take the mix and uh, will will convert it into these different formats and send it out to the uh, to the correct person uh, am i speaking too fast though like i know i m tend to ramble on no 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 it's good it's good yeah okay uh, then there's there's a person called an arranger who decides uh, which instrument comes where which instrument should be louder or which instrument should be quieter and uh, if uh, if a piece is composed in a particular uh, instrument, maybe he will change it to another instrument. Uh, they can an arranger can have their own team. They can have a, an actual musician, or they can have a programmer who uh, does the MIDI programming for them. Um, then there's sessions musicians who are basically musicians for hire. They they charge a lump sum amount of money for uh, for a particular set of songs and they don't have any say in the royalties later on so that's a session musician they're paid once uh or you know you can be behind the scenes in the in the live scene also like uh, when a musician is performing you can be the one who will be who will be on the desk who will be mixing them uh, or you can be someone who is providing the monitor mix to the to the musician. Like they need to hear themselves while they are performing. So you can be the person who is providing that mix to them. So these are a few of the different uh, jobs which a person can do outside of performance in the music industry. You know, and uh, it is very important to understand just how important this point is that music is needed in everything. You know, it's not just a song. You know, you have music in film. You have music in games. Uh, you buy a Hallmark card and a few of them have music in them also. You know, you have a mobile ringtone, which is which is composed by someone. So there are a lot of these small jobs which people don't even consider to be a musician's job. But they're there, you know. And uh, what, what a person needs to do is identify that these things can be done and you don't always have to go for for a stage performance or, or you know or performing in in a movie or putting out an album there are so many other things you can do you can be making music for ads which is a big big market it's a huge market or you can be uh, uh, composing some music at, at your home and tomorrow some friend of yours is making an indie game suppose you could be providing that music uh, to that game, um, and uh, yeah. So these are these are small jobs. Now they can be informal or they can be formal. Uh, formal jobs always work on briefs. So a brief is a document which lists out what what a client expects in the music. It lists out your uh, deadlines. It lists out what format your they want the music delivered in, uh, and uh, it is uh, and and as a producer, it is always important to insist on a brief so that there is no misunderstanding later on uh, between the client and the producer. And uh, if there is a dispute, you can always go back to the document. I'm I'm sure Mr. Punjabi will agree with me. It's almost like a contract. Uh, then there are client expectations. Sometimes they're very clear about what they want. Other times they will use terms which are not technical. You know, I want this to be warmer. I want this to be more flowery. Terms like that. And uh, understanding these terms comes with, uh, with uh, practice and comes with uh, experience, you know. So what you need to do after your education is to get an internship or get an apprenticeship under a, under a well-established engineer just to learn these things which are not taught in school. You know, it's a very practical field. So just knowing the theory is, is, in, is not sufficient. You need to have a little bit of practical knowledge as well. 
and now finally uh, in these small jobs uh, often clients will ask you for edits you know like we want this change we want that change now it is very important that one does these edits you know because that maintains customer relationship and uh, you know uh it's a it's a very uh, it's a very weird thing because if you do a good job there won't be many edits but then if there are many edits and you do them your relationship improves uh so there needs to be a balance between the two and uh, there will be certain times where uh, you will meet a client who will ask you to do an a disproportionate number of edits and generally this person generally uh you know instinctively it is like this person might be trying uh, to exploit you you know they might say that uh, this work is not good enough for us and so we are not going to pay you or we are going to pay you less and one needs to be aware that such uh, such people also exist and uh, and just double back on the on the brief and what has been predetermined earlier so this is very important while doing small job because they don't pay as much and they they're not exactly uh, small as in they don't take they take a, a good amount of your time and if that is for nothing then that's not worth it so one needs to be aware of how the client is behaving with them and and sort of judge what where this is going um now once you are established a little bit in the after doing a few a few of the smaller jobs you can start looking for a uh, more formal sort of employment in the field like uh, this is where uh, you have entire teams working on a single project uh, these are generally like albums for big artists or uh, or or song or movies or a triple a game or something like that so these generally come with a proper contract they come with non disclosure agreements and uh, uh, the job description of each and every member of the team is clear cut in this case like a mic director will just do mic direction a mix engineer will just do mixing a mastering engineer will just do mastering and a arranger will just do arranging and uh, this is this is where the the big money starts coming in um i remember i was doing my internship uh, in in purple hay studio in bandra i was working with uh, with a few big names I was, we were working on the movie uh, mere pyare prime minister it's a rakesh mehra movie um and uh, and that's where i got to see this sort of a dynamic where you had a team of uh, of music directors three of them and you had a lyricist and you had an arranger and you had a mix engineer and you had a mastering engineer i was an assistant engineer and my job was to provide uh, monitoring for the singers at that time and uh, trust me these people took six figures a day so that's where the big money is and that's what people should be aspiring for but to get there it's it takes uh, a lot of small jobs and a lot of consistency and uh, basically you need to be sweet talking to a lot of people you know that doesn't mean that you have to keep your integrity aside you know there are there will be times where you will be asked to do certain things which you don't agree with and it is important to speak your mind because people value that a lot uh and people value someone who speaks their mind and uh, maybe after you speak your mind you can come with a with a compromise and that is also okay you know and that that's that's what you need to keep in mind now uh, there are two distinct we, we are at this stage in time where technology has taken over our lives and we are at, and we can we have more options available to us so there are indian options and there are international options with indian options you have uh, bollywood you have ad films you have uh, independent artists but uh, the trend to uh, these days is they self produce themselves uh, there are there is the live scene which is huge 
uh, you can be a front of house engineer who mixes the songs or you can be a monitoring engineer who mixes the monitor mixes uh, and that pays on a nightly basis uh, i remember uh, uh, when when i was performing I, i mean i still perform but when i was performing with a team our foh engineer used to get 8000 rupees per night for mixing one band and he would be mixing four bands in a night so that's 30000 approximately in one night so that's good money uh so those are the options in the indian scene and uh, then you go to the international scene where the uh, where the uh, where it just expands completely you have these traditional indian options are all, all, already present in the international world where you have artists and you have film and you have ads but you also have uh, stuff like toys you have uh, uh, you know uh, what i call those the um, music to uh, podcasts yeah you have podcasts you have editing jobs for interviews uh, you know i recently got a job where i was just editing audio interviews which were taken over the phone for for uh, an author so that author just wanted me to remove all the kachra from that all the unnecessary stuff and leave only the relevant stuff so that when she hears it back she has only the relevant stuff and she doesn't end up spending her time uh wasting her time so so that's what i've been doing and i got a position of a uh, research assistant because of that with a publication house uh so that was completely unexpected you know like uh, i'm a sound engineer and i'm involved as a as a research assistant on a book but that book is also about music it's about uh, nico from the velvet underground and her biography and uh, it's going to come out in july on the 1st of july and i'm i'm super excited about that now another curious proposition is international operations which are outsourced to india like often when i was living in the uk uh the average cost of a regular studio was about 30 to 35 pounds an hour uh which is just like a home sort of a setup in some commercial space you know a tiny setup while in india yashraj uh, studio which is like the best studio in bombay probably maybe this one which is better than that but debatable charges about 3800 rupees including taxes per hour so that's sort of equivalent so the best studio in bombay charges the same as the worst studio in london so it's often more profitable for large operations to fly everyone down to mumbai or chennai or places like that and use the world class studios over there to get their job done and it is still still cheaper than doing it over there like it's still cheaper to stay in a five star hotel and do your stuff in india than do it abroad uh i remember when I, when i was in tsm there was this uh lgbt uh, public service announcement which is going to be aired in the usa but they recorded uh, ellen page who goes by elliot page now at uh, at the studio in tsm for really really cheap and we all got to meet her um then uh, you need to um then how do you get into production though uh is very easy actually firstly you need to have a bit of an aptitude for music you know you need to have that liking for it uh and you need to have an ear for instruments like you you need to take your favorite songs and you need to listen to them and you need to recognize which instrument is being played at what time you know if you can't then maybe you can do a little bit of research you know you can google things you can go on youtube you can find out what instrument is what you know after that you need uh, you need a small setup uh in the past 10 years things have just gotten cheaper you don't need to spend spend uh, a lot of money i mean it is still a fair bit you need a decent laptop 
I need a decent uh, suite of softwares. It's called a digital audio workstation. There are several which you can choose. I'm not going to advocate for any particular one because everyone has their thing and it is okay to use their own thing as long as you can produce the end result. And uh, and you need a thing called a MIDI keyboard, which is which is really cheap these days. So uh, with these three things, you can you can get started. You can either go to a school for some uh, education in, in music production, or you can. Um, there are several tutorials on YouTube. There are tutorials from universities. There are tutorials from companies which manufacture the gear. The tutorials from companies which manufacture softwares. Uh, the more you watch, the more you learn. Um, so I would recommend uh, doing a small course somewhere to get started and then uh, absorbing as much as you can. Soundonsound.com is a great forum for if you like to read on these things. Uh, there, there are YouTube channels if you like to watch and if you uh, if you prefer to watch over reading. Um, but what I would like to stress on is you need to know a bit of theory about everything. First, you need to know theory about sound, uh, the physics of it, how sound works. Uh, if you know things about that, then understanding how certain things, certain effects in sound work becomes much easier you need to understand a bit about your, the biology of your ear so that you don't end up hurting yourself while doing something extreme you can take the precautions before uh, before doing something like that and thirdly you need to know a little bit of music theory uh, you know you need firstly you need to know a bit of western classical theory as in how it is represented on the sheet because that directly translates to your piano role where you program all your music. Uh, it, is, it is very correlated to that. Uh, the rhythm is the same. How it is represented is the same. How the notes are represented is the same. And in fact, in certain softwares, you can, uh, you can write the sheet music and it will translate itself into, into an audible sound. Uh, so you need to know that it is easier to communicate with other musicians when you know theory. Uh, now, there's Indian classical theory also. And I personally think that it is easier to, uh, it is easier to notate rhythm in uh, Carnatic style, like Takete, Takedimi style, rather than uh, uh, in the Western style, like Wani Anna, because it is much simpler it, to understand, and it is uh, uh, it is not as confusing because it uses a different scheme for every rhythm, and in, in the Western they use the same scheme, so it gets all very confusing. Uh, so yeah, you need to know a, a bit of the theory, not not a lot. You don't need to. Uh, be able to transcribe uh, uh, like Beethoven or Bach or anything. You just need to look at a sheet and understand what's going on. You, you don't have to be able to immediately able to play that. You just need to understand that. Um, anyway, so how do you actually make money from, from all of this? So firstly, you need to be tenacious about it. You can't, you can't have freeloaders come and say, boss, you're my friend, please do this for me now. No, you're a professional, so you need to charge your fees. Now, there will be times where you will be doing things for free. But again, over there, you need to look at what favor you can get out of that, you know, or what that other person is able to offer you for doing something, for doing a favor for that person. Uh, then thirdly, there's royalties. Uh, everything you produce is copyrighted at the moment you produce it. But if you want royalties on that, you the easiest way to go about is to register with a royalty collection agency. Now, there are several around the world. The Indian one is not so great. It's called IPRS or Indian Performers Rights Society. 
uh, they charge a yearly fee and uh, they pay biannually i think dole ko likhti ho na ki usko bolo aur wind up karo main yahan se bolu isse acha i heard it i wind up um there there is prs and uh, mpcs in the uk which are pretty good the italian one is not that great but you need to register most of them take a lifetime fee like a nominal fee for a lifetime you need to register with as many as you can and uh, you never know wh- where your uh, your composition is going to become a hit and where the money is going to start coming in so each member of the team has a small share in that royalty and that is calculated by the royalty agency and they they pay out and there are there is something called a synchronization deal where uh, a, a song which has not been in a form of media earlier but has already been released on on record is uh, licensed to be used in say an ad or something um so um yeah so I, i've been asked to uh, include it is already past 12 okay so um yeah anyway i hope that was informative for you and uh, if you have any questions you can you can ask them now any questions yes sir uh, there is one question uh, by the participant it is uh, this how much does it cost to book a music studio for a day okay so it depends on what sort of a uh, studio you want you have a studio which has a uh, say like a focus right scarlet or something which is like a home setup which is a very low end studio which will be around 500 to 600 rupees an hour and uh, the best studio in bombay is about 3800 rupees 800 rupees an hour so there'll be studios in between that range thank you sir so right from 500 to 4000 rupees an hour okay thank you very much kunal it was great oh. to listen about it <laughs> everything about uh, production we normally don't go for production <laughs> we always hear the voice and uh, music and talk about only that those things so it's a behind the scene uh, yeah there is a lot well you can explained. do behind the scenes ma'am yeah. there's a lot you can do behind the scenes and a lot of people miss out on that yeah. and uh, if more people pay pay attention we'll all be better off yeah. uh, neelam madam formally vote of thanks hello Hello, Kunal. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm very much there. I was listening to you. Even uh, I have uh, heard the earlier speaker, Madam. Uh, she she was also very good. You have become a good orator, ah? Huh? Good. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Keep it up. Neelam thank you for inviting. Thank you. And we can start the next one. He is waiting. Roshni, please take over. Yes, ma'am. As all the good things come to an end in life, so is this webinar. I hope you feel you got a powerful inspection of chemistry super knowledge. An event like this cannot happen overnight. The wheels started rolling days ago. It requires planning and a bird's eye for details. Thus, I am pleased to bid warmest thanks. to all the delegates of the seminars principal vice principal the faculty members at all the levels the illustrious speakers for their presence and contribution which made this webinar exemplary the technical team of self for their unflinching support and coordination we have been fortunate enough to be backed by a very motivated and dedicated team who knew their job well and are result oriented At the end, I would request all the participants to please find the feedback link in the comment section shared already. Thanks a lot.